Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will prove this theorem that Z star P is a cyclic group. We will make use of all the facts and lemmas that we have learned so far in the previous segments. If there is an element of order P minus one, then we can conclude that element generates all the elements of the group, right? Because Z star P itself is a group of order P minus one. For example, consider this uh, Z star five, which is made of numbers from one, two, three, four. Uh, what is a generator? Two is a generator, three is a generator because it generates all the elements of the group. Clearly Z star five is a cyclic group. This is just from an example. We are able to find an element which generates all the elements of the group. If we can do that, then we can conclude that group is a cyclic group. How do we now prove this uh, for the general uh, prime P. We are given a prime P, Z star P is a cyclic group. How do we go about and prove that? First of all, we will make use of an interesting observation that if you uh, take your elements and partition them according to the order, as I'm doing it here as an example, take Z star 5, which is made of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. What are the possible orders of uh, elements of the group Z star 5? Remember, each element has some order. Okay. We also proved that order of the element divides the order of the group. So what are the possible orders for this uh, group Z star 5? It can be order 1, 2, or 4, because 1 divides 4, 2 divides 4, 4 divides 4. 4 is the order of Z star 5. I'm going to partition the elements of the group Z star 5 into different buckets. Here, I put all elements of order 1. How many I have? Only 1. Uh, Okay, because one power one is one. How many elements uh, with order two? Only four has order two because four power two is one in mod uh, uh, five. What about uh, elements of order four? Two and three, because two power four is one. Three power four is also one in mod five. So I have basically partitioned my elements of the group into different buckets. And I'm just counting how many elements do I have in each bucket. Here I have one, here I have one, and here I have two. So totally I have four elements, which is nothing but the group order. The group order is also four. That's the reason I say sum of the number of elements. Remember, n p of d is a function that we defined earlier in the in the in the previous segments. N p of d denotes how many elements in your group uh, have the order d. And uh, remember, we also learned that order of each group element divides the order of the group. Okay. Sum all the n p n p of d over all d you will get the order of the group, exactly like the example I have shown here. So this is the basic fact that I need for this uh, theorem, okay? And I will also need another fact, then I will explain it uh, in a moment. So P minus one is nothing but uh, sum of uh, all D over P minus one in P of D. This is coming straight from fact number one, okay? This is the trace. We also proved earlier that N P of D is bounded by pi of D. We in fact proved that N P of D is equal to pi of D if we know for sure N P of D is greater than zero. Otherwise we can say it has to be bounded by pi of D. So, so this less than or equal to is coming straight from this fact, all right? We also proved in the previous segment that pi of D for all D that divides the N is nothing but N. Okay, so in the place of n, we have p minus one. That means pi of d, sum of pi of d for all d that divides p minus one will be p minus one. That this equality comes from fact number three. All right, so what do we have now? We have p minus one on the left-hand side, p minus one on the right-hand side. And uh, we also know each element of this um, summation series is less than or equal to the corresponding element of the other series. That means the corresponding elements must be equal. Otherwise, you will not get an equal to on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Okay, here is a equal to. You have P minus one, P minus one. So we have both sides P minus one. Therefore, each element in your summation must be matching the corresponding element in the other summation. This is only true because um, each element on the left-hand side is less than or equal to the element on the right-hand side. Okay, that's something we proved here, which means uh, one particular element that divides P minus one is P minus one, right? P minus one divides P minus one. Therefore, N P of P minus one must be equal to pi of P minus one. Okay, as I said, each element in the series matches the corresponding element. Therefore, one particular element of interest is um, element of order P minus one. But we do know for sure that Euler's quotient function is a positive function. It's always greater than zero, not never zero. Okay, which means N P of P minus one is greater than zero, which means we can be sure there must exist an element of order p minus one. If an element exists with an order p minus one, what can we conclude? That element must generate all the elements of our cyclic group Z star p because the order of the group Z star p itself is p minus one. All right, that's basically the proof. 